Alright, what's up guys? So in this video we are going to be doing a Diablo 4 vs. Last Epoch comparison. And that's going to be my early impressions on both games. We'll leave out in-game because I haven't experienced that in either one. Um, the D4 beta gave me an itch that I just couldn't, you know, hadn't been scratched in a while. And so not having access to D4, I needed something to fill that void. And I just decided to give Last Epoch um, a, a try because I've played so much D2 and PoE in the past that I wanted something fresh. And um, first off, if you guys don't mind hitting that subscribe button, I'm getting close to a thousand subs and I'd really appreciate it. But anyways, back to the video. The topics I'm going to cover in this are the classes, character customization, skills and builds, crafting and itemization, and gameplay. So first off, let's uh, let's talk about the classes and the character customization. In this uh, last epoch, there are five base classes, and then each base class has three specializations that you can choose from. Each class has its own skills, and then each um, specialization when you when you pick that at around level 25, it's fairly early in the game, um, within the first few hours of playtime, you. Uh, also get access each each base class and specialization have their own passive tree and when you pick the specialization you get some passive stat boosts just from picking that specialization that are kind of themed to that so like for the sorcerer um, I believe you get bonus mana and like bonus spell damage or something like that just just for picking sorcerer um, which is one of the mage specializations then you gain access to that specializations full passive tree as well as the other two specializations the first half of their passive tree so it gives you a lot of um, options on how you really want to build your character and what you know your play style is and, and what seems strong and, and enjoyable to play you also get um, the skills of the base class and then as you level through the passive tree it unlocks um, those skills for each specialization if you choose to use them and then you I thought six skills um, Diablo 4 and Diablo 3 only give you access to six skills I thought that wasn't very many um, this game last epoch only gives you five skills so you are forced to have uh, your left mouse click as like a force move and you can't assign an attack to it which took a little adjusting to me but once I got used to it, it it didn't bother me as much as it did in the first probably hour of playing the game but still only having five skills you can see here um, at the top this is what a skill looks like when you so it's almost it's similar to the gyms in PoE where you know you can tack on um, support gyms to sort of boost their power well in this as you level up you unlock those slots at the top and you can pick which skill you want to um, boost or specialize and it un each skill basically has its own talent tree inside of it and that's what this looks like here so you can pick these passives for your skills as they level up I believe each skill has a max level of 20 and you can gain plus to skills from gear to get a few extra points so that's where a lot of your build and um, character power come from, is the skills you pick and how you boost those skills, as well as the synergy with your passives. Um, a little bit on character customization. It seems like there are a lot of possible builds. It's hard for me to say really what, um, how many are viable, but definitely a lot of potential builds to try out and I, I couldn't tell you which would be you know considered strong and like S tier versus like you know C tier um, but definitely a lot of a lot of options here so theory crafting and testing builds coming up with fun builds and play styles is something you enjoy I, I'd recommend checking this game out one thing I didn't like that I felt like uh, Diablo 4 really set the bar and set the standard for was just customizing your your actual character's appearance I, I didn't really think that gender locked classes and not being able to 
you know, change my appearance would bother me in an ARPG. But after playing Diablo 4 and hopping into um, Last Epoch, I, it affected the class that I chose to play simply because I didn't want to play a female necromancer. So, and, and then also the, I think it's called the Guardian, basically like the Paladin class. I decided not to play that class just because I can't, you know, customize the appearance. Um same thing with the mage like I, I wouldn't wanted to change his appearance but I couldn't and the primalist was probably the only class who uh, you know he looks kind of like a bearded barbarian slash druid you know buff buff character that's the only class that you know I didn't really it, that's probably how I would make my character look um, anyway in the game so I, I decided to roll a mage in this I, I couldn't really tell you why because typically I don't play um, a mage, but I, I just thought I, for some reason, I, I did, and I was looking at it, and it looked like you know there's probably potential for like a melee type build, but I, I ended up gravitating towards this uh, glacier spell, and to give you an idea of kind of how I've customized it and my how my build currently works. At around level 50 or so, max level is 100. Um, the normal function of the skill is it shoots the small glacier and then the medium and then the large, but there's a, uh, a talent you can select in the skill that reverses that order. So I get the huge upfront damage immediately, which a lot of times one shots stuff. And then if it doesn't, the smaller ones usually finish them off, or I just, you know, throw out another glacier. And. Then I am taking the talents that boost the large uh, glacier damage significantly. So I'll just have that huge upfront damage and just kind of, you know, crit and, and burst things down. Um, and then I have uh, the, the shield. It's kind of like energy shield, but um, it drains over time. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of fresh, interesting mechanics in this that you know, may, may have been inspired by other games, but they've really taken them and created their own, um, you know, new, innovative way to implement that. So uh, it gives you this, you know, basically energy shield, but it deteriorates quickly over time. You can slow that deterioration um, through intelligence. I, I really like the stats in this game. You mostly, really the only access or point, way you can get stats is through the passive tree and gear, but the stats are very significant in what they do, and so you you know you want to specialize in the stat that that's relevant to your build. So intelligence increases my uh, most of my spell damage, and it it slows the deterioration of the um, energy shield or barrier, or whatever they um, refer to it in this game as, and then you can also find gear that that generates it so you can see I kind of have a static like 55 just based off of um, some items I have that give me you know that generate it every second and then some of my skills give me energy shield as well on top of that so the the skill I have on my E slot it's sort of like an active mana region that grants me some barrier as well uh, you, you don't have any mana potions in this game. You can go into negative mana, which, which is interesting. So if you get to, you know, let's say like 10 mana, but you want to throw out another nuke, you can. You'll just go to negative 30, and then you can't cast any spells that cost mana until you get back into the positive. So a, a, an interesting and fresh mechanic. I would say the resource generation and the resource in this game is uh, much I prefer it much more than what Diablo 4 has. Um, Diablo 4, the you know your your starter attack, um, your basic attack, it just typically feels weak, and for several of the classes, the amount of resource it generates is not um, in in the early game that we got to experience in the beta. The the generation is not enough to fuel your spenders and your core skills. So those two skills just felt really underwhelming 
And I know a lot of other people had this sort of similar complaint with Diablo 4 that as you level, the way the game scales, it kind of feels like um, you're, you're growing weaker over time in a way. And you're, you're trying to keep on pace with how the, the entire world level increases as you level. So you can't, you know, farm for gear in a, in a lower level area if, you know, perhaps your gear isn't where you want it to be or you just your build you know for whatever reason maybe isn't as strong at that stage in the game as other builds so next let's talk a little bit about the um, crafting and itemization in in last epoch compared to diablo 4 and and we'll even we'll even throw in poe a little bit here because I, I think it's relevant so looking at this um, this is how this is what the crafting screen looks like in last epoch so you can with this rune of shattering and and i haven't done a ton of crafting but i've done you know a decent amount so i, I understand at least how the, how the basics work you can um, pick items and with this rune of shattering if it has um, you know eight prefixes or suffixes affixes that you like you can break it down and you can gain um, those shards for those affixes and you can also find those shards you'll find tons of them while you're playing through the game they're just basically crafting resources crafting materials and each piece of gear has a um, forge um, capacity or a forge limit and that's how many times you can craft um, to boost that items affix tiers or add on if it doesn't have an affix if it has an open slot you can craft one into it and i really like the way that this system works because it feels meaningful and powerful and you have access to it right uh, right out of the gate so i've already done you know crafted some fairly decent gear that I've you know not found upgrades to just because they, it has so many of the stats that I want on it already um, that that it's hard for me to find an upgrade. So typically I'll I'll just you know craft a, a new upgrade when I find something close with with a good base or with a couple other good stats on it. Each affix you can level up through different tiers to increase its power. Um, a lot a lot of interesting affixes in this i think maybe more interesting than um, diablo 4 in a lot of ways um, the itemization one thing that i've been a little frustrated with is there are um so there's you know the blue the magic blue items there's white items there's uh rare yellow items there are orange um, unique or legendary whatever they call them in this game items and then there's green set items that, that I've found so far there may be other tiers that I'm unaware of as I haven't you know I, I don't really typically look up game guides before I play a game so all the most of the orange and green items I've found are for necromancer like I'd say 90% and then I found maybe one or two that are for primalist I'm assuming or like a physical DPS class. So I haven't really got to test those items out yet. I've just been using rares. Um, there's a built-in loot filter that that is really nice. It has a lot of um, options and settings in it. And I, I've just basically set it right now to just showing me all the rare items and above. And I just pick up all the rares and when my inventory is full I'll shatter the ones with the affixes that I want to stock up on for my build and then I just sell everything else that's that's how I've been doing it um, inventory management system in this game it's it's all right um, it seems like your in, my inventory fills up pretty well quicker than I would uh, like and most of the items don't really sell for very much like the 14 gold that drops on the ground um, typically the items will sell for between 10 and like 30 gold so you can easily find you know larger piles of gold on the ground just from killing monsters so it almost seems like I'm wasting time picking up items and selling them but I do feel like it's worth 
worth it to uh, hunt for the affixes I like and, and look for possible upgrades. So it, it, that's my only complaint really for the itemization. I, I do like the itemization in D4 as far as the drops go. I feel like the drops are done very well. Um, I, I hate having to deal with loot filters. I feel like if I have to deal with a loot filter, it probably means there's too many things dropping on the ground that otherwise should just not be dropping. And I think D4 had that really done right, where um, one thing I'm curious about is if there will be a use for blue and white items in Diablo 4 um, in the crafting, or if it's really just going to be like you ignore those items. But even if they are just, you know, trash and not worth picking up, uh, potentially, it, there aren't there are so few of them that at least drop at this stage in the game that it doesn't feel like a loot filter is necessary. So I would say the crafting in this game is between Diablo 4, PoE, and and Last Epoch. I would probably rate Last Epoch um, higher than the other two. Uh, I think the PoE crafting is almost inaccessible to the average player, aside from just in a league, um, you find a piece of gear, especially in hardcore, and it's missing a stat, like you could craft on um, some life or some, you know, lower, lower tier of resistance, it just what you need to like fit into your build. Um, but it's not really something that you utilize beyond that, or utilize while you're leveling or to really customize your character whereas in um, D4 I, I feel like the crafting is going to end up being oh let me break down this legendary power um, that I've been using because it's essential for my build and I just found a, a stat upgrade on another piece of gear so let me break down this legendary piece for the power and then slap it on my new piece of gear um and, and then when you get to high levels or possibly in game oh let me upgrade this piece of gear three or four times to get it maxed out um i, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of thought in the d4 crafting um at, at least from what we've seen so far I could be wrong. Um, there, there were some things in the D4 crafting that I didn't fully explore. Uh, I think I, could, I don't remember if you could do stuff with like the specific affixes on the gear or not. Um, but in this, you can. So you can, you know, there's there's a lot you can do. So you could select, like, if there's an affix you don't like, you can select that and attach a different like a scroll and be like I want to re-roll this or I'm going to upgrade this affix and then roll a random new affix so um, that was kind of beneficial to me because if it was like a, an affix that I didn't really like I could use that crafting material to upgrade the affix tier and then have a shot at getting something that was beneficial to me so I could do that like two or three times and end up with like a tier three or a tier four affix and then get something that I actually wanted so that that was very significant um, and then there's just you know you can upgrade the affix and then once you get that too you can still upgrade the affixes um, when you run out of the forging potential that's when um, you know that gear that piece of gear is kind of done as far as the upgrades go I don't know if there's anything later on you can find that like refreshes the forging potential there's some scrolls that give you like a percent chance to not use any forging potential when you do forge it. Um, and then also it, when you forge, it, it costs between randomly between like one and 10 or 15 forge potential. So you have the, you know, it, on a really good day, if you get really low uh, rolls and, you know, maybe you only use up one forge potential each time, um, you could really power up that piece of gear uh, by whereas vice versa if you have bad luck and you get you know you roll 10 
you use up 10 forge potential off like two crafts while well, you're that piece of gear at least at my current level is is kind of done so that's that's the crafting and and itemization in a nutshell um the the itemization is you're pretty standard like cooldowns move speed resists um damage increases of various types and um you know attack speed cast speed minion damage it, it's pretty standard there's some you know plus to skills there were some some more interesting ones that i saw that i'm assuming will probably be on higher level level gear where it's like it has a percent chance to give you like fire aura on crit um some stuff like that so probably as i get to higher level there will be more interesting affixes like that where it's like on crit effects or you know on hit th things like that so I'm, I'm excited to see um those affixes as i further progress through the game what the sets look like um maybe the the end game systems and crafting so I, i'm definitely you know gonna probably play the crap out of this game until diablo 4 comes out because i want to play a couple other classes as well um just because they look interesting and and the builds potential is something i get excited about theory crafting um so i highly highly recommend this game um last last thing i wanted to talk about is the gameplay um it, this game it plays very well i, I didn't have any it's still in you know early access but it, it feels like a finished product almost at this point to me um, I'd say it's plays better than you know the early path of exile did as far as like performance and graphics not not quite as I'm playing on you know max graphics here and it's not quite as beautiful as Diablo 4 and and possibly even some some poe areas now might outshine it but the, I mean, the glacier, like, there's a lot of skill effects that look and sound and feel really good um, in this game. And, and the mobs, like, the monsters move pretty well. Um, there's destructible uh, things in the environment. The one, one thing I got really used to in Diablo 4 that I feel like is almost a must-have, like, staple, um, something that they innovated, like, uh, really really well is just adding in that spacebar dodge button when I started playing the game after playing this game right after the d4 beta I kept hitting spacebar trying to dash forward and it it, it feels um, it feels really good to have that and then now not having it um, you know it feels like I'm gimped almost like it, it feels like my mobility isn't what it should be in an ARPG and I feel like that little combat dash is just the perfect addition to ARPGs um, where you, you just need that little you know hop to get out of the way of something um, instead of just like teleporting across the screen like if you're gonna telegraph attacks on the ground to me and I have to like slowly run out of the way it kind of it takes the action out of the action RPG for me. So I, I really think that was a big addition to ARPGs that D4 has going for it. And then how they incorporated the boot effects into that. So like you can get an extra dash or reduce the cooldown or get a burst of move speed after dashing. Those were all things that I thought was... was something done very well um and only having the five skills in this versus the six skills i think it does kind of limit your gameplay because i would like to have one other if i could just have one more or two more abilities in this um until I get more mana i'm kind of forced into having my right click ability here but i almost never use it unless it's on a boss fight because I I do enough damage to just one or two shot everything with my main skill but I kind of run out of mana quickly and so I don't have high sustained DPS on boss fights um, a little glitchy type thing that's in this game and also I learned is in Diablo 4 
when I'm using that ability and I'm assuming there are other abilities that that has the same effect and this is also in Diablo 4 so it's a it's kind of a minus a DKP minus to both games if you hold down the move button right in front of your character and repeatedly mash um, that attack I can like double or triple the attack speed of it it, it it's like somehow it's it's almost like a glitchy uh, feature that you know, I, I'm assuming is not intended because if I just hold down the the mouse button to attack, um, I have my proper attack speed, and you know the the full animation plays. But if I hold down the left mouse button right in front of my character and then mash right click, I get that that double or triple attack speed, and and the full animation doesn't play out. And apparently, this is also in Diablo 4, um, on the, uh, at least on the rogue, probably other classes as well. But most notably, someone discovered it on one of the rogue skills. And I don't like doing it, but I feel like I almost have to. A after I discovered it, it, it's kind of become second nature to me. If I don't do it, I'm like, why am I attacking, you know, at, at one third of the attack speed I could have? So it's just like I'm sitting there like click, 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 mashing, mashing the right click button and holding down the left mouse button. It just... It doesn't feel good. I don't like it. You know, it those types of um, glitches being in the game. It's like you're almost forced to do it, or you're being inefficient. So that's that's kind of all the topics I wanted to hit on this, you guys. I'd highly recommend Last Epoch. Really looking forward to Diablo 4. I'll probably do an updated video um, on sort of all these comparisons. Um, once the full releases are out and I've played the end game in, in all of the games. So if that's something you might be interested in, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm going to be having a lot more, um, you know, last epoch D4, just ARPG content coming out. And so if that's something you might be interested, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for listening guys. Thanks for watching and remember to give them the deed.